and welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome back to my 911 Carrera T. Now, last time I filmed with this car, I told you all I was gonna sell it, and that was 100% my intention, but, but yeah, I, I obviously haven't sold it, because here it is. <laughs> I hate telling you guys one thing and then doing something else, but I promise you there is logic to my apparent madness. Let me explain. So at the end of last year, I finished Drive the World with 30,000 miles on the clock of this car. And I'll be honest with you, I reckon about 25,000 of those miles were very sort of boring, mundane, point A to point B motorway miles. So I kind of lost the love for the Carrera T because I was just using it in a very boring way. I, I never got the chance to really exploit the capabilities of a 911. But since then, things seem to have changed. Uh, as you will have noticed, I took the roof box and the roof rails off the car, took it to Yanomai, who removed all the sort of sponsor logos and put the original Carrera T side stripes on. And whilst I've left the rally lights and the orange Porsche logo, and of course, the Topaz skin, it just looks a little bit different in my mind. I see it in a new light. On top of that, I've been using it in a fun way, like today when the sun comes out, which is rare if you saw my last video. So. I should have, I'm getting the smile factor back from this car. Then of course, we also have to talk about the money. When I bought this car, I did it through Magnitude Finance, as most of you will know. And the deal we built meant that there was a very strong likelihood that when I came to sell this car, I would be in something called negative equity. Basically means that I would owe the bank more than the car was worth. That is because I was always gonna put a huge amount of miles on the car, much more than most other owners would. Now, Magnitude, you know, advise strongly against this. They kind of build deals that avoid you ending up in that situation, but I kind of saw it as just a cost of drive the world, something that I just have to kind of swallow at some point. Long story short, I was gonna to have to pay about 10 or 15,000 pounds just to sell this car. In addition to that, if I wanted to replace the 911 with a kind of another sports car, I would probably have to put another 10 or 15 grand into a new finance deal. So suddenly, it was gonna cost me 30 grand to change this car just for the sake of, you know, five new videos or, or, or a different kind of narrative. And, you know, I just got a lot of other exciting things planned for this year that that money could go towards. If I spent that on replacing this car, suddenly all the things that I've got lined up, which are fundamentally pretty big, become a lot harder to achieve. So, yes, the Carrera T is staying, but to help sort of give it a new personality to me, I'm taking it to Litchfield. Yes, the car looks a bit different, but I also want it to sound and perform slightly differently, just so that when I get in, I go, ooh, exciting, not like, oh yeah, this old thing. So Litchfield, I think, more famous for tuning Nissan GTRs. However, they do dabble in the 911, and they've done some amazing work on the Carrera T. So we are off to get a new exhaust and a little bit more power to help this car just, you know, feel and be a, a little bit different. The weather turned against me on the drive here to Litchfield, so you may notice the car is now covered in rain. But anyway, we are inside the kind of main workshop, and here is my new exhaust, a slip-on Akropovich setup. Now, I don't really like saying slip-on, it sounds a bit crude and weird, so basically it's a back box and new tips. And if you're coming down to Litchfield and having any work done on a Carrera, you get the choice between a Remus exhaust setup or an Akropovich one. Now, I've gone with Akropovich because obviously I've had those amazing experiences with Bentley earlier this year and last year and their Continental GTs, which had custom Akropovich setups for the Pikes Peak Edition and the Ice GT one. So I was like, yeah, Akropovich, let's do it. Also, uh, titanium setup, so it keeps in line with the kind of Porsche ideology. Now, it's gonna take a couple of hours for the guys to do the changeover of this, and then the car is gonna to be headed to the diner, which is where we will rejoin it. So whilst they're working on the exhaust, I'm gonna give you a tour of Litchfield HQ, because this place is pretty damn impressive. Mm -hmm. 
Now, usually I hate this moment when anyone starts to look at my car. But the guys are making actually some quite positive noises because apparently, usually, 911 exhausts do tend to kind of rust up in the UK. A lot of wet weather, a lot of cold. So it can be quite difficult to kind of get the systems off. But we're thinking, a conspiracy theory, that because my car spent so much time last year in kind of dry weather conditions, it's held up pretty well. So I'm not going to, I still don't want to get that close because I don't want to spoil the thing that I'm not happy with. But yes, we're hopeful that this slip on system is going to slip on. I've popped outside to the car park quickly to sort of prove just how bad the weather has become, but also to show you the scale of the GTR operation down here, because there are R35 GTRs everywhere. As I mentioned, it is kind of Litchfield's bread and butter, and they offer a range of upgrades. You can come for a stage one, which is basically an ECU tune and a bit of a part for the exhaust. That takes the standard car from, what, 480 odd horsepower up to 600, or the facelift from 550 to 600. Or you can do a sort of full custom engine rebuild and, and pick a number. 3,000 horsepower, they will do it. The reason I wanted to prove how bad this weather is is because I kind of wanted to test drive one of these beasts today, and it, it it's not going to happen. It's just not the right day to test one of these cars. So I will be back to Litchfield to have a go in one of their GTRs because they are famous for converting these things into absolute weapons. And I have now sort of come across a few crazy GTRs during my travels last year and it needs to be done. Anyway, I've got to get back inside. Sorry. <laughs> A sneak peek there of the Akrapovich slip-on exhaust. More to come on that later, but the car's now been moved into the Litchfield Dyno because, as I explained, the car's not just here to get a new sound, it's also to get a little bit more performance. Now, stock, this car runs around 380 horsepower from the kind of bog standard previous 911 Carrera engine, the 3.0. The Carrera T element is really sort of more about, well, spec settings rather than actual performance figures. However, Litchfield have been working hard and their EC2 Oh, I can't even say that. ECU tune on this thing is next level. I'm going to bring in Ian Litchfield himself to kind of talk me through this whole rig, what's going on, what we should expect from the dyno run that's about to take place. Ian, I'm a little bit scared by that number. <laughs> that says 520. I I'm not going to be able to hold on to this thing. We well, definitely need new tyres now. So. I definitely need new yes. tyres. Um, look, anyway, thank you so much for today. You're thank welcome. you for all of this. Uh, talk to me because we'll get into the fact that that readout is currently saying 520 yeah. and that you've transformed this car. But where did it all begin? Because GTRs are your background, just sort of bread and butter, as I've been saying. Yeah, Subaru was where we started. Oh, really. okay. That was the main thing, um, bringing cars in from Japan. And then that progressed into the GTR, and that's progressed into all things supercar, really. Okay, fine. So, 911, I mean, this engine, this particular car, the Carrera T, does it give you a sort of a good base level to progress and find extra power? Yeah, I mean, the, the, I think the three litre engine is, is about as, as good as it gets, really. It's oh, superb. Um, I prefer the three litre, I think, probably to the, the 3.8 turbo engine. We've got a turbo S, um, and this seems to give more power more readily, um, presumably because it's had to go through much stricter emissions and therefore you can uncork it and find a lot more power. Okay, well, yeah, a lot more power is right because I mean, I'm going to come over, maybe I'll bring you over as well to the big screen. And we just did that last one that you guys would have seen. And there you go, the top figure is reading 520. I claim that my car, I think, stock had around 380. Yes. Porsche officials say 365. So Yeah, three, 380 is about right. Most of the ones we test with the, the standard turbos on there are about 370, 380, 385, something like that. So it's pretty oh, much bang on. Oh, no, talk me through, what are we actually looking at here? What does the curve represent? What are you looking for to see if this has gone well? Well, we, we've got data to check for make sure everything's working properly. But so the red line is your power at the engine, and this this line here is the is the torque figure. So it's making 470 foot pounds of torque, which is what you're going to feel on the road. <laughs> yeah. And the, and the peak power number is 520. But given that the engine's well and truly freed up, that's you know 500 horsepower is 
pretty normal for, for a car like this with running good fuel. Pretty normal, he says. Yeah. So I'm terrified for my drive. Two, two wheel, two wheel drive. <laughs> Perfect weather and everything. Perfect yeah. weather today. I don't know what happened to that. Yeah. Really, it's the beautiful sunny skies we had. Um, but look, how, how long did it take you to sort of develop this? You know, torque curve, I imagine, is pretty important in terms of on road drivability and stuff. Yeah. You have a Carrera T yourself. So that's the key is we have our own cars. Okay. So we, we try to develop everything on our own cars, take the time, there's no rush. I just sort of chip away at it over time and, and get these packages being well received. Everyone's really enjoying it, so it's gone really well. Because it's not just about, here, let's just throw a load of power on it, right? It's, it's got to be no, usable, I mean, reliable. Use, absolutely. I mean, you can run more torque. There's more torque available, but you just spin it away. So there's, there's no point in, in running it necessarily. And then, plus, it generates a lot of heat. So you need to keep things sensible. Of course, yeah. A big thing for me is usability, reliability, and I mean usability. I, I am now questioning. I just I'm shocked by this because our initial conversations were like, oh yeah, like four fifty. Well, like it's that. sort of evolved, isn't it? It's really? evolved. What it's parts evolved. You've had and things. Like <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the cars in here look very grubby and a very impressive setup. You were explaining those fans back there because it's kind of almost like a wind tunnel. Almost. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. exactly. There's no there's no fan on the front. It gets all dragged through the uh, through the room by the big fan on the rear. And then we then have to have uh, fans pointing down to where the intercoolers are fed at the back. And then we have extraction fans at the back, which then drag it through and keep the system moving. Right. It's very difficult to keep the intercoolers cool on these. So you only get sort of a few good runs and then you have to leave it to cool down a bit. Then you can run again. Oh, amazing. Well, I'm kind of blown away. I obviously haven't driven it yet, so I'm going to hold all price. Right. But so far, I mean, so freaking good people. This car most definitely has been transformed. I'm genuinely a little bit intimidated by this car now. I, honestly, I thought, let's add like 30 or 40 more horsepower just to make the car a little bit more responsive. It's great, it's pretty much fast enough for English roads already, but sometimes it felt a little lacklustre. So I just wanted to just, just spruce it up. I was not expecting 500 plus horsepower and that huge gain in torque what has ian done anyway this is going to be my first time experiencing the akrapovich exhaust from the inside so uh let's make sure we do this properly straight into sport mode just to get the ultimate bump oh it's got a basier rumble a basier rumble but let's face it all of this is going to be found out when i drive this car properly for the first time and that's not going to happen right now because the weather is still crap so you're gonna see me next with this car hopefully on a good road when the weather is a little bit better and i'm going to be sharing my thoughts on yes 500 plus horsepower in my carrera t I wanted here with me for my first drive. Paul Wallace. <laughs> oh, I had to be here. The I'm now calling you Mr. Modifier. Okay. Because realistically, ever since I bought my very first car as seen through glass, an Alfa Romeo 4C, you've been pressurizing me to <laughs> in some way modify whatever's in my garage. Absolutely. Turbocharge it, supercharge it, ECU tune it. Well, I've finally done that. I know, I'm very proud of you. And as you may be able to see, the weather has cleared up. It's still a bit greasy. And we are out here now in my Nylon Crowty, which has over 500 horsepower. To the rear wheels. Which have no tread on them. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's quite a daunting prospect. Now, in terms of the exhaust, just to sort of clarify something here, I wasn't looking for big exhaust noise. I've always liked the way that the 991.2 sounds. Instead, we were chasing performance. So, exhaust expert over here is a bit disappointed today, <laughs> but I'm actually like, yeah, you know what? I could have gone crazy, could have done sports, cats, and turbos and things like that, but for me, that was a step too far. I am fundamentally a modification virgin, so <laughs> I've got to take small steps. Um, but yeah, so you're not going to hear a huge difference in the sound. From the outside, it sounds a bit better, doesn't it? It does. I've been doing some flybys, and there are some real nice overrun burbles. The real step up, though, of course, is in terms of power delivery, and this thing is now <laughs> an absolute, oh my god, animal! <laughs> 
the fundamental was I wanted this car to feel different when I got behind the wheel. <laughs> and that it does. I mean, it is it's so fun. Oh my. <laughs> You're reaching for a handle. I saw you reach for a handle. This thing for me feels so different. I feel like maybe you find it quite exciting. It is, it is. Like, you don't really say that about Porsches that often. No, and not really like a 911 T either. I just feel like it was <laughs> underpowered. I mean, it, but okay, yes. Now, like, I can feel the acceleration sucking my organs, and that is a good thing in a sports car. I'm, you so, I'm so nervous, by the way. <laughs> I keep backing out of the throttle. <laughs> well, you haven't picked the best roads for it. No, I picked awful roads. But I just wanted to pick any roads, really, just to be able to get out and just just try and see what this car's going to be like with over 100 horsepower more that's than... That's a massive transformation. It's huge. It and is. that's just an ECU tune and a slip-on. I hate that term. Yeah. Exhaust. Well, you do realise that Porsche would have detuned the ECU for this particular car. Sure. So you can just unlock additional power like that by plugging it in. And then what Litchfield would have done is then added their custom tune, which would have probably varied torque delivery and things like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> torque delivery, which I would have to say is noticeable. Uh, I went through the actual graph with Ian from Litchfield and he was saying that it was built for the road. You know, they, they probably tuned it so that it was usable. Yeah. I can feel the torque being delivered. I mean, every time I apply the throttle, it just, it turns up like the torque. Does it turn up like DPD though? Because they give you an hourly slot during the day. No. Someone like Yodel where they go between 8 and 6 p.m. No. Is it predictable is where I'm going? Yes, it's predictable. It's just a lot more than what I had previously. So I'm like, oh, there it is. But the thing is, oh, I now have, for me, such an exciting car. And that's not to say this car wasn't exciting previously, but mate, this, yeah. this is a driver's car. I've got 911 handling and characteristics, but now with the, the performance that I think maybe I was I was lacking a bit. You were hoping for on Drive the World. Yeah. You would have completed it so much faster. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it would have only been a three month trip. I would have been back in August last year. <laughs> wow. I mean, a huge, huge thanks to Litchfield. They really have transformed it with very, well, it is a lot of work. It was a whole day, but, but very little <laughs> changes fundamentally. You don't see the R&D that goes into it. No, exactly. Uh, Ian did mention that he'd been on the uh, dyno for six hours the night before I arrived, wow. just finessing things. Wow. But yeah, for me, I am so, so happy. And it means that I can get in this car and be really excited about driving it. Yeah. It's not just a, it's not a daily, it's not a point A to point B car anymore. Well, it means that you'll probably flick it into Sport Plus more than just driving it in comfort everywhere. Oh, I haven't gone into Sport Plus yet. Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think the road was appropriate, but we can... I, I, I'm, I'm actually scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so are you. Yeah. Oh, oh it's a big truck. Oh, it's a boy. Oh, slow down. He was like, I don't care about that. <laughs> that looks crap. <laughs> I mean, listen to this for a launch. Whoa. Proper power, right? Yeah. I think let's leave it there before we kill ourselves, or <laughs> yeah. I kill you and myself, uh, and save this car for well, its next video. When I guess it will be somewhere even more exciting. I suppose I, I've got to take it somewhere now and exploit this <laughs> the proper mountain road, the tire shop. Yeah, that's true, Pirelli. <laughs> I'm coming for you. Your stickers may not longer be in the car, but I need your rubber. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, Paul. Do you now give this the seal of approval i give it a good thumbs up okay i don't know double thumbs up oh okay i'll take that uh, make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come